would love you would love to do it? Why? But give me why. I, I just want to know like what is it that you want that you got? And what camp did they go to? You're telling me that you want to experience all this fun stuff, but meanwhile you're telling me in the same other sentence is that you don't even know what camp they went to. So this is just you talking out of. Dad didn't seem like he was talking to his daughter. He seemed like he was interrogating a suspect. Can, can you relate to anything she's saying as a child? I just see it. I just I feel that there's deception there. You feel that there's deception? Yeah. I think it's really weird that Dad thinks Clarissa is being really deceptive, when actually it's a nine-year-old girl asking if she can go to summer camp. <laughs> Oh, there's a family in Staten Island, New York, that need my help. We better take a look. Hi, we're the Delray family from Staten Island, New York. My name is Adele. My name is Joe, and we have three children. Peter and Deanna, who are four-year-old twins, and Clarissa, who's nine years old. Peter, where are you going? Do you want to go sit in your room? I'm a stay-at-home mom. Sit down. I don't get a break. Sit down. I have really no time for myself. No, no, oh my God. And I find it very, very difficult. Hey, no! I'm a detective in law enforcement, and my hours are really, really crazy. Now play with this thing, and you stop acting like a little animal. The stress of the jobs are very, very high. Up here, get up, sit right the right way. You want it, you come come to me, and I give it to you. Sometimes I don't get to de-stress coming through that door. And we go home. And I find myself getting very, very upset. Where are you gonna go by yourself? You're gonna go by yourself? I'm not playing anymore. Okay. You're sitting right here. What does this dad think? He's still at work? <laughs> Deanna's biggest issue is she's extremely defiant. Let's go. She's very, very stubborn. She doesn't give in. She wants what she wants. You want a laptop? and she's not gonna take no for an answer. You know, I deal with psychos out there better than I deal with her. Yeah. Hands down, she's just nuts. Yo. <gasps> Peter has a very difficult time dealing with the word no. Peter! Mom. He immediately throws himself into a tantrum and will even come at me and hit me. Stop. Peter definitely takes advantage of his mom. We have two ways of parenting. Take that game and throw it right out. You understand? I'll throw it right in the garbage. Oh, you're so tired. This is all you want? That's all you're gonna have. You guys need to talk. There needs to be some compromise. Clarissa is a wonderful, wonderful child. And he's like, this party? Although she loves her brother and sister, I find that she does harbor some resentment. She feels that um, she doesn't get all the attention that she so desires. The twins monopolize a lot of my attention, and Clarissa can get overlooked. Good old Clarissa. Look, helping out, helping out. But who's spending time with Clarissa? You do not throw things. I'm going upstairs. You guys can play. Right now, I feel there's five different people in this house. No, no, no. And I want to try to get those five people together. No! And just become one. How do you think I feel? Well, Super Nanny, civilians call cops. You got one cop calling you. No! Super Nanny, please, please come, come help, help our, our family. family. Looks like it's a 911 in Staten Island. I'm on my way. Hello. Nice to meet you. It's Elder Ray. How are you? Very well, thank you. Please come in. I quickly realise why the kids don't listen to Mum. She gives in to their temper tantrum and appeases them on every level. Come on. Mm. You're going to get hurt in here. Do you know that? You can get hurt in here. There's a lot of things in here. <gasps> okay, so you just want to stay there. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll have to put so. belt in my, in my feet. On your leg like daddy, I, I don't have anything that's gonna keep it there right now, sweetie. You know that? <laughs> Calm down. All right, 
let's see. What, what do you want to do? You want to you want to put it on your leg? Should we figure out a way to put it on your leg? Yeah. Okay. I mean, is this is this what you would normally do? Is just you would say yes to stop the um, this? Yeah. Um. Sometimes the problem is giving in to bad behaviour takes away all your authority, so that you can never say no. Peter, we're going to have lunch, and we're going to go outside after lunch, OK? All right, honey? Listen to me. We will go out after lunch, OK? Yes, Peter. We're going to have lunch, and then we'll go outside and play. Peter, we don't hit. We don't hit. Peter! No, by me. Do you want a timeout? You know what? Maybe, maybe, maybe that's what you need. When Peter threw his tantrum, I was Mortifying that this is my child that is doing this to me. You don't hit mommy, okay? You're in a timeout. Listen to me. Listen to me. You don't hit mommy. There are times when Peter can become so enraged, and this is how it comes out. Mum's time out with Peter wasn't effective because she was trying to reason with him. Can you stop crying? And actually, I don't really think she knows how to do a proper time out anyway. So can you define time out in your household? It's for calming and for reasoning and for also for disciplining if I've... So it's kind of all in one, is that what you're saying? I guess. I, You know, I, I guess much of the time when my normal routine is it's it's... I become overwhelmed. You sit down. I saw our mum handle the kids, and I certainly was eager to see how Dad would handle the kids when he got home from work. What's up, pal? Hi. Hi. Hi, pleased to meet you, Joe Frost. Nice to meet you, Joe. How are you? Uh, yeah, nice very well, you. thank you. When Dad got home from work, he started to play with the kids, and that was really nice to see. But Clarissa, the eldest one, who's nine years old, brought up to her dad about going to summer camp. And that didn't go down too well. I would love to do it. You would love you would love to do it? Why? But give me why? I, I just want to know like what is it that you want that you guys go and what camp did they go to? You're telling me that you want to experience all this fun stuff, but meanwhile you're telling me the same other sentence is that you don't even know what camp they went to. So this is just you talking out of... Dad, I don't know. Dad didn't seem like he was talking to his daughter. He seemed like he was interrogating a suspect. Can, can you relate to anything she's saying as a child? I just see it. I just I feel that there's deception there. You feel that there's deception? Yeah. I think it's really weird that Dad thinks Clarissa is being really deceptive, when actually it's a nine-year-old girl asking if she can go to summer camp. So you don't believe that the real reasons she would want to go to summer camp would be to experience what other people experience? Well, if she's looking, I want to know where this is coming from. I guess I'm not the average dad, and I always look. I'm very fearful. If she gets together with maybe three or four of her friends who I don't know, right. and they have a different way of dealing with certain things or maybe, like, challenging each other. But, but I'm, I'm curious as to where really kids would be that wouldn't have supervision. I still don't trust nobody. Dad's a police officer, and yes, he sees some awful things. And I believe that that has scarred him slightly on how he deals with his children, because he doesn't have much trust. Absolutely. Excuse me, excuse me. What, yeah. does, he, what does he want? He wants an apple. We're going to have dinner now. No! We're going to have dinner, and then you can have it after. No! Just give me one second. Just give, me, give me one second. Dad jumped in and he started to discipline Peter, but he's got to realise he can't be a police officer when he's at home. Listen to me. Look at me. Look at me. Stop. Do you understand me? I'm talking to you. I yell a lot. Um, it's something I don't want to do. Now, you go down and you go tell your mother that you're sorry. When he addresses the children, it's 
probably much in the way he addresses people at work. It hurts me. It hurts me to see that. Stop it. Look at me. Mum's got no authority. Dad's too aggressive with his authority. And if these parents don't meet in the middle, they're going to really mix up their kids' heads. Look at me. When dinner rolled round for the Delray family, Dad was still on duty as a police officer because he was still interrogating Clarissa. Okay. Your potatoes Mom, first. Um, someone dared me to do a lunch, drink ketchup out of a packet, and I did it. Oh, oh it was so good. I love ketchup so much. What happened? <laughs> Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Didn't somebody just dare you to do something? No, and what I did you do? No, 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 no. I know what I heard. They said you what to said you? Somebody... We dared you. They said they, they dared you to do it? It's unbelievable how, how you want, and you did it, right? And you, and you did it? Yeah. That's pretty cool. Thank That's you. pretty cool. Thank you, Dad. And you know how stupid you were? I was just, oh my goodness, I just wanted to leap out of my seats. So I'm like, you don't call your daughter stupid. I just thought, you know, it's, it's a ketchup packet. Yeah, now you're gonna, now, again, see, why are you doing that? I just think you could use a different word. No, that's just idiotic. That's stupid. That's stupid. And my, and that's me. That's stupid. You know what? She could have. That's listened. stupid. Maybe no. her judgment was off. Maybe Mom. that's a better way of putting it. Mom. You know what? Her judgment was Mom. off on a packet of ketchup. Hello. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Not only did Dad overreact to Clarissa's story, but he continued to interrogate Clarissa like she was a suspect. See? And then you talk about trust, and you talk about you want to go to these camps and stuff like that. And what did you just do? You had somebody. I did that once. Once, and it was a packet of ketchup. Dad asked me to come and help, and now it seems like he's putting up a brick wall. And before I leave, I need to know that he's on board. So you asked for my help, but you have a trust issue, and in order for me to help you guys, you need to be able to trust me. I guess I'll uh, do something that goes against every grain I have. I don't have a, it's my last, it's my last shot. It goes against everything I, I do, so. I'll trust you to help my family. Good man. I'll see you tomorrow morning, tomorrow morning. Because we will need to have a serious family yeah. meeting, okay, to get to bottom this stuff. Okay. talk to you both about is what's been holding you back. Let's talk about your work and the transition between work and here. But you walk into the house with the same militant attitude that you deal with outside. And it's your four-year-old toddlers. It's so severe. I mean, a child as young as Peter and Deanna can't comprehend that. You gotta shake it off. You gotta shake it off. Do you not feel that? I feel it. I guess I just find it difficult to try to get that balance. What can I change? You gotta change wanting change. You're a man that doesn't like change. No. I wanna talk about your parenting together. This whole good cop, bad cop situation. It's crazy. Neither of you take what you have, those qualities, and work together. Even if we try, it's different. She has her way and I have my way. And... So if you can show us how to work together as a team as, so that we can be on the same page. That's the middle that I'm looking for. Let's talk about Clarissa. Trust is a big issue in this house. Mm -hmm. Clarissa, she's a smart cookie. But if she's got a dad who doesn't trust her, then, you know, what does that say about the trust that she's gonna have in herself? In life, she's going to make decisions. And some of them are not gonna be that wise. And some of them will be. But the fact is that you raise a competent child to make decisions herself. It's very true. Any questions? 
When do we start? <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow morning. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. There's plenty to deal with in the Del Rey house, but the first thing I do want to put in is an effective discipline technique. So these parents know what they're doing. This is your time out. Okay. We're going to stick this beside the basement door. Okay. Okay, up on the wall. The benches are going to go below that. Okay. There are two, one for Deanna, one for Peter. Okay. And I knew it wouldn't be long before Peter put Mum to the test. You want peanut butter and jelly? Okay. Why don't you wait a few more minutes and we're gonna have lunch, okay? Peter, come away from the freezer no. and close the door. No. 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 Come away from the freezer and close the door. No. 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 If you don't listen to mommy, you're, you're gonna go in a timeout. Him. You've already told him. Step back, because I'm going to go through the timeout. My son is now having this complete meltdown. So I'm thinking, OK, I'm going to put him into a timeout. And I was so self-conscious and nervous. And it was very overwhelming. <laughs> Sit down. Peter. Sit down, Mom. Come down to his level and explain in a low tone voice why you're placing him here. Peter, you're in a timeout because you did not listen to Mommy. <laughs> And do as you were told. And do what you were told. Right, up we get. Up we get. Walk away, Deanna, walk away. They've never followed through with discipline, and that's why these kids are all over the place. There's no rules, there's no boundaries, and there's no consequence. They do what they want, when they want, they rule the roost. Nobody's there to put them in check. This is natural how you're feeling, OK? You get anxiety, you're, you're a worry, worry, worry person. The worst that's going to lead you is that he has a full-blown Temper tantrum on the floor. That's the worst it gets. That's the worst it gets. I feel a little, little shaken, but she gave me that little pep talk and she's like, you're gonna be okay. You need to do this for him. Listen to me. I want you to come. I want you to tell mommy you're sorry. Can you tell mommy you're sorry? For not listening. Can you tell mommy that you're sorry? I was like terrified of the tantrums and the meltdowns. And now I'm just like, it's okay. It's only a tantrum. Next, I turned my attention to dad. Hello. Hi, honey. Welcome home. Parents with stressful jobs can find it very hard to decompress. And what I wanted to do was take Joe through that transition of being tough cop to playful dad. How'd you do today? Good. Everything's fine. Follow me over here. You're going to take off all your gear, all right? Holstering everything, and you're placing it in here. When Dad comes home from work, he's very stressed, and he'll just go up to his room, and he'll just sleep, even if he's not sleepy. You are going to wear this fun Play Daddy badge. With Dad's gun now locked up in the safe, I had him put his stuff into the box so that the next transition would be him going downstairs and talking to Mum for 15 minutes. For the want of a better word, crap went down today. Or it didn't. And you need to be able to trust your wife that actually she can handle that emotionally. Dad did surprisingly well. I mean, he really opened up quickly and he started to speak to Mum about this stressful, dramatic day that he'd had. A couple of accidents. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had one guy pinned. Uh, he didn't make it, though. That must have been hard, huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was crushed. I mean, the whole, the whole car T-boned. We both have issues. And I think it's, it's very hard to communicate that to one another and be compassionate. How was your day? Today was a great day. Yeah. Mum and Dad did really well, so I sent Dad upstairs so that he could listen to a relaxing CD and decompress for 10 minutes as the final transition. That 10 minutes takes me to a different area. It takes me to a calming zone. And when I come down and I'm done, I'm able to control my emotions a lot better. What do you want to play? You want to play some baseball? Yeah! Cool. 
Okay, no, too close. Daddy's new transition time, I love it. We'll play ball, he'll gently wrestle around with us, spin us up in the air, and that just gets me so happy because I feel like I have a new dad. With decompressing and de-stressing, combining them is what gets me through the day now. Can I help you? <laughs> That's my back, you know. Now that Dad's in the right frame of mind, I want to work on his relationship with Clarissa. Some dads find it very difficult to emotionally connect with their daughters when they get to a certain age, but it doesn't mean that they can't have fun, and that's what I want to work on. This is the exercise, OK? You're going to play this CD... OK. ..and you're going to come up with a dance routine, and Dad's got to follow. Clarissa he was the princess for five years, and then the twins came along, and I tried to explain to her that they're just too little and I need to give them the same amount of attention that I gave her when she was little. Come on! <laughs> OK, so Dad's got this tough cough exterior, but actually it's quite nice to see he's a teddy bear inside, having fun with those kids. <laughs> when he, like, dipped me, he looked at me and I looked at him and, like, we could just tell that we were so extremely happy. And I was like, Daddy, I don't want to ever stop this. You know, it's funny, I had hair like this in the 80s. <laughs> to see her smile and to really see her genuinely appreciate it, to me, is everything. And I will do whatever I have to do to uh, see that smile. You know, if I look like a goofball, I'll look like a goofball for her. Yeah. <laughs> Tuck it in between our thumb and our fingers, and it becomes a mouth. The next day, Dad was at work, and Mum was at home playing with the kids. And yet again, Peter put Mum to the test when it came to discipline. Uh, no, 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 no. Peter, we have enough glow, Peter. <gasps> Peter. <gasps> honey, <gasps> honey. Peter, <gasps> listen to Mum. Turn him around first. You're getting scared <gasps> of his temper. We've Peter. been here. <laughs> Peter. Beautiful. <gasps> I heard that crunch. I mean, that must have hurt. There's no two ways about that. <sighs> Peter, calm down. Bring him back. Learn from the experience. Old girl, we're not backing out now. Come here. Come here. Come here. She started to cry, and it wasn't good. I mean, it wasn't good. Time out for you. I took over to show Mum how to do it properly. No communication and no feeding into the drama. I don't know. It just my my confidence was shaken. It really was. Why are you crying? Huh? It's hard. It was hard. It's hard to be firm. I get I get frazzled. But let's not forget the progress you have made. <gasps> let's not forget that. She gave me that little pep talk, and she's like, you're going to be OK. You have the tools, you have the techniques, you know what needs to be done. You need to go up to Mummy, and you need to give Mummy a big cuddle, because you hurt Mummy. I want to say sorry to Mummy. Tell Mummy you're sorry. Peter, do you want to tell Mommy you're sorry? Mommy. OK, sweetheart. Mum gets really overwhelmed when it comes to handling the kids, and I really think that she could do with some more support from Dad. I want them to work as a team. You trust me, right? <laughs> We're going to do that blindfold. You trust me, right? I trust you. So? Mom, could you blindfold Dad, please? I was just like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> you are both together going to bake a cake. These are the rules, OK? Only you can talk. <laughs> I have 
to direct him. <laughs> him taking orders that, you know, he was never good with that. Oh, I bet you wish you never wore this today. <laughs> Put the cake mix inside the bowl. OK. Very fun, very fun. We need three eggs. So if you can feel for the eggs to the left of you. It does take teamwork. You can't have one person doing it. And Joe showed us that. One more egg. So even though we were on opposite ends of the spectrum, we're fighting for the same goal. <laughs> OK, the table's directly in front of you. <laughs> right there. What kept making me laugh was mom. Oh, my god. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Oh my goodness, no, no, the oil, stop sitting on the cover. Like every two minutes, she's like, oh my God, jeez, oh my God, oh my God. Oh, oh my God. Oh my God. That was like a duo comedy act. Oh God, oh God, wait, hold, hold the, grab the spoon. Easy, easy, easy. Okay. Mm. It was quite the experience. Mm. Then it was a role reversal. You come over to the table. Probably shocked. Shocked her. Put your hand in there and scoop it out. My hands? Yeah. <laughs> I was like freaking out when I put my hand. I had like I was spreading the frosting with my hands and I was just like, oh my goodness, I can't believe I'm doing this. Put that down. Put put the frosting down. I was like, oh my god, oh my god, I wanna wash my hands. There you go. Alright, good. Okay, well done. I was able to trust her and she was able to trust me. Well, it was good to turn it around, right? Yes, it was. Good to turn it around. I want mum and dad to take the same principles, listening, compromising, baking that cake, as raising their kids. I'm leaving for several days, but I'm going to leave these parents with an assignment. Clarissa's nine years old and she's never slept over at a friend's house. I'm going to leave them an overnight backpack and what they're going to do, these parents, is actually give Clarissa some slack and let her have a sleepover. Any idea what this is, Jo? It's Clarissa sleeping over at someone's house. She's nine years old. She wants to experience having fun with her friends on a sleepover. If we're going to think of all the things that go on, I tell you what, we won't go outside that front door, would we? Let's face it. You're going to have to recognise the importance of trusting your kids that they trust themselves because they know that they have their parents who trust them. Adele seemed like she was on board. Joe, I'm not so sure. I'm very apprehensive about the sleepover. I really don't know. I'm going to have an issue with this. Jojo's going away for a few days. Bye bye. Bye. I'll see you when I get back. This family's come far. They've made real good progress. Peter. But the big deal is going to be Adele keeping nice and calm when she's got to put Deanna and Peter in time out. Bye, Adele. I have this fear of the kids going into the tantrum and me losing that control. When Peter hit me in the nose, it shook that confidence that I had. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Hey, transition. <laughs> transition, OK? Have fun with the kids. And certainly for Dad. I hope he can remain disciplined to give himself the time that he will need to be the father he wants to be when he comes home. Bye, kids. I kind of had tears in my eyes because I didn't want to see her go, but I know she had to go. I was like, OK, that's it. Party's over. You know, back to normal. This ain't going to work. I have been away for three days, so... Let's see how the Del Rays have done whilst I've been gone. Well, whilst you guys were busy catching up with life, I was busy catching a cold, oh. as you can hear. So um, we're push on through. The first one we are going to concentrate on, that's transitions. Let's go help Peter. I'm going to talk to Mummy for a few, OK? How was your day? It was, uh, you know, just a lot of surveillance. Mm -hmm. I can't find my fresh one. What do you say? <laughs> <laughs> Tis great. 
The importance of this is consistency. We all get ourselves in a place where we could choose to say, I don't have time for that. You have to have time for this. No, I, I find that that's very, very important for me. Fantastic, let's move on to the next one. Dad's trust. <laughs> oh, you're laughing, so let's take a look at that. <laughs> Daddy, Corey wants to know if I can sleep all night. Oh, look at your face. <laughs> it's like the words hit you and you were like, it's now or never. I promise I'll, I'll call you. I'll call you, okay? Um, I'll, I'll listen, I'll behave, I promise. Dad, trust me. How you call back? Clarissa, come here. I'll call you, okay? I'll call you if anything's wrong and I'll call you just because sometimes. Can you just give me one chance to sleep over? I'm gonna trust you. Thank you, Daddy. You're the best Daddy in the world. I promise I'll behave. I'll listen. I'll call you. I promise, Daddy. Thank you. Love you. Love you too. Okay, behave. Make sure you're a good girl. Okay. Bye, Dave. How was your sleepover? Good. Yeah? Did you have a lot of fun? Yeah. It passed. <laughs> du -du -du -du. <laughs> you rock. That's serious. Oh my God, Joe. That took a lot. How did you feel when you said yes? And she was just like, so grateful. Well, first of all, I couldn't believe I said yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's, uh, but uh, to see that look in her eye, and actually I really did see more. And I think that's why I did trust her. I really did believe in her. Let's take a look at this clip. It's all about you relating to one another. What were you making? Well, I, I was gonna make them little pizzas <laughs> on English muffins. You want pizza? You want pizza? You want pizza or bologna? No, I Okay. You want pizza or bologna? Pizza. That's all they both. Just take a deep breath and let's be in sync with one another. Are you going to work? You need, you need. Are you going to work? Yeah, I work 24 hours, seven uh, days a week, but that's, yeah. Really? You want to trade? Yes. You want yes. To, not a problem. Listen. Just go out there and make Seriously. what I do then. Okay, fine. I don't have time to. You know, like if I'm late, you know, you, I can't be late. So, as soon as the boat gets rocked, that's what happens. We get the big ego about this is the work I do, look at my work, it's all about me, and nothing about what you do during home. Mm -hmm. And that's ugly. That doesn't have to go on. Yeah. So, I want to get cracking with maintaining this and taking us to the next level. So, are we ready? Sure. Well done. Thank you. I'm on my last day of teaching the Delray family. <coughs> and I've no idea of the drama that's already unfolded. <coughs> Deanna was in a timeout because she was laying on the floor throwing a tantrum. I want to hear you say sorry. <coughs> OK, then you stay in timeout. Deanna was just being defiant, so I left her in the timeout and I walked away. And then I saw her peeing on the floor. I couldn't believe it. I was like, oh no, what do I do now? When I walked in, Deanna had wet herself. Oh, just in time. I knew that was on purpose, because Deanna's potty trained and she doesn't have accidents. Oh, and she's decided to be defiant and go for a pee. Mm -hmm. Oh, she can stay in those wet knickers for a bit as well, and she can feel what that feels like. I was so grateful that JoJo was there because she was able to see now with her own eyes and then tell me exactly how to address the situation. Quite frankly, 
Taking a pee on the floor is basically flipping you the bird. Deanna really needs to shape up with her behaviour. And so it was very important to coach Adele again through that process. When you're asking for your apology, it's not a case of just say the word sorry. Right, it's meaning. And it means you can get out. It's like, you owe me an apology. Right. Like, I really feel like you did wrong. She knows what she does, and she chooses to push the boundaries with you, and it's got to be tough. That wall's got to be brick, not made of straw. Right. And that's what we're doing here. So go back with the firm boys and actually tell her, you need to tell mommy you're sorry. Deanna, turn, turn around, around and please. look at mommy. You need to tell mommy that you are sorry. Okay, mommy is not happy with your behavior. Do you see this pee-pee on the floor? This is unacceptable, unacceptable behavior. Okay, I want an apology now. I want to hear you say you're sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Eventually, we did see Deanna back down and apologize for her behavior. And of course, she was given the talk with regards to her pee in herself. This behavior is unacceptable. Pee pee on the floor. You understand? You're going to go to bed early tonight. Had it been the old me, I would have certainly been shaken by it. But I have this confidence within myself. You bring your clothes upstairs, and you're going to put them in the hamper right now. I am very proud of myself. With that out of the way, it was time for one last thing. Mum and Dad have worked so hard together that I felt they just needed a little bit of special time together alone. OK, what I have here is a date night calendar for you both. You've already established your teamwork with the kids. Now it's time for you two. Don't forget yourselves. It's important that parents set aside time just to be alone and together because it makes them closer, which in turn makes them better parents. We're going to start off by having a date night today and the pair of you are going to go and spend some quality time together. OK, and I'm going to take care of the kids. It's nice to be relaxed, you know, not tense. It was nice to be able to just sit with him and have a glass of wine and just talk. I enjoyed the date. It was really nice. Something that we, me and Adele, have not had in a very, very long time. Do you know that a man that is vulnerable and shows his feelings is incredibly sexy to a woman? Really? Yeah. I was feeling so empty inside, and I feel full again. I think that enables me to be a much better parent to my child, because I am coming from a place where I feel whole. I'm better for it, and my children will be better for it. I'm going now, so come and give me a big hug. And a big kiss. Bye-bye. It's a good beginning for the Del Rey family. They took direction incredibly well. They put a lot of hard work in to the techniques. Clarissa, you have learned so much yourself, my darling. Thank you, Jojo, so much, because now my family is happy, just as I wished. Adele! <laughs> I thought this was just about the kids, and I see that it wasn't just about the kids. It's about the whole family unit changing, and that's exactly what happened.